Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. You got Luke. Luke, we're continuing our series on the periodic table of elements. Focusing in on some precious metals. Some precious. Not all of the precious metals, Just but our few. favorites. I think that I, 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 I called them, I always thought they were called precious metals, but when I was doing some research, they're, they're called noble metals, I think. Are they? I, I saw did not that somewhere. See that. I saw them called precious metals okay. everywhere. I saw noble. Maybe well, I'm wrong. You're you're pretty noble. I am. Thanks. So the first one we're going to look at that I got a chance to look into is gold. <laughs> That's, That's gold, gold Jerry. Jerry. Okay, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Group 11, period 6, block D, symbol AU. Which makes no sense to me. It does because it's from Latin arum, A-U-R-U-M. Obviously, Latin coming through again for the yeah. win, right? Atomic number 79. The melting point. I always, For some reason, I think this stuff's really interesting. I don't know why. The melting point is 1,064.18 degrees C, which is 1947 Fahrenheit. 1,000 degrees is the, is, yeah. the, is the melting point? Yeah. The boiling point, on the other hand, is 2,836 degrees C, or 5,137 degrees that's, Fahrenheit. That, that's actually a lot lower than I thought it would be. Well, I'm sorry about that. Did you ever see when Carl Drago? Cal Drago. The, That's what I was thinking. He poured the boiling gold on the on the brother's head. On the brother's head. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> he wanted a crown of gold, and he got one. So, do you think that fire? <laughs> got to well that's what i was going to comment on is like I, so that had to get up to 2000 degrees fahrenheit I, in this little tent fire and it and yeah and they like and, and they like in the way they showed it, it happened in like two seconds and did you even see him use like pot holders to pick up the thing no. i didn't but cal drogo was very tough he was and very handsome friend, so. friend of the show jason mimosa he is a long time listener fan of the show yep. stops by whenever he's in pittsburgh filming a show or movie mm-hmm. to hang out with us you've probably caught him on some of our episodes anyway Density, 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter, making it one of the densest of all metals. And this might come as a shock. At room temperature, it is a solid. Did that shock you? It did. Okay, quick history on it. Gold has been uh, has been known since prehistoric times, so that's a long time. And one of the first metals to be worked, mainly because it was found as nuggets or in particles in like a stream bed uh it's thought to have been discovered around 3000 bc it was in such high demand by 2000 bc so a thousand years later that the egyptians started to mine specifically for gold uh if you haven't checked out our episode on the egyptians check during it out our civilization smackdown go do that uh the minting of gold coins started in 640 bc in the kingdom of lydia modern day turkey do you think like back in the day like like cavemen, like we're making like big thick chains with it and like and and grills. grills. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what else would they have done for it? Yeah, what, right? what else do you do with it? That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, they made grills. Uh, so where does it come from? Gold ground. comes from the ground. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. It's one of few elements to occur in nature, like as its natural state. So you don't have to do anything to it. It's found in veins. Uh, about 1,500 tons of gold are mined each year. How many? 1,500. About two-thirds of this come from South Africa now, and the rest basically comes from Russia. I was going to say, uh, isn't there an Alaska Gold Rush TV show? There on? is, and they're always failing or struggling to yeah. survive, right? Like, the piece of equipment quit working. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so even though they mine most of it, the reserves mostly fall in China, Uh Australia, Russia, and the United States. So they also mine a lot of stuff in those places, too. Uh, The abundance in the Earth's crust is 0.005 part per million. So not a whole lot going on there, right? Gold often occurs uh, in association with copper and lead deposits. And though the quantity present is often really, really, really small, uh, it's readily recovered by refining those materials. Uh, one of the cool things that I saw was the cyanide process. I don't think we've talked about this before, but for some reason I've heard about it. So this was uh, a method for extracting silver and gold from ores by dissolving them in a diluted solution of sodium cyanide uh, or potassium cyanide. And the process was invented in 1887 by a Scottish chemist. Remember our like ranking of the countries? Yeah. And I had Scotland they way were, up there. They They're really good for their size. Uh, John S. MacArthur and Robert W. Forrest. 
and William Forrest. So the method includes three steps. Contact, uh, yeah, contacting the finely ground ore. So you grind it up and you dump it into the cyanide solution. Then you separate the solids from the clear solution. And then you recover the precious metals. Very simple. Uh, so this is something that happened in like 1890 and really started to make gold finding. So all easier. I need is some cyanide and I'm good. Yeah, you're good to, you're good to go. Okay, though. that's cool. So a little bit about how gold is used. Uh, it's mostly mined to store as bullion. It is also uh, extremely often used in jewelry, right? Either in its pure form or as an alloy. So the term carat indicates the amount of gold present in an alloy. So 24 carat is pure gold, Jerry. Uh, but it's very soft, so you don't usually find yeah. 24 carat gold. Uh, it's usually like 18 or 9 carat uh, making an alloy, which makes it more durable as 14 well. 14 is the number that I always... I see a lot of 14 as well. I wear yeah. a lot of 14. In your grill, yeah. yes. Uh, obviously, it's turned into coins as well, uh, and it was used or is used and sometimes still is used as a standard for monetary systems in countries. Uh, it's turned into super thin sheets, right? And then you can use gold leaf for art and decoration, stuff like that. Have you ever eaten gold leaf like on a dessert? I had a whole thing about that. Edible gold. What exactly is edible gold leaf? It's gold. That's all it is. Pure gold. It's 24 carat, really thin gold, or a mix of edible metals, uh, such as pure gold or pure silver. Did you do a thing on Goldschlager? I did not. Do you think that's actually gold I leaf in there? I, I can't imagine. I feel like it, is, it isn't. Because it's like four dollars a lot. It's four dollars a bottle, and it tastes. Do you remember terrible. Goldschlager? I hate oh it. man, Ugh. I don't think I've had it since college. It is not good. Though I've had Fireball. I, I, I I'm gagging thinking about it. Gold's also great for protecting electrical copper components since it conducts electricity well and doesn't corrode. Therefore, those connections stay strong. Thin gold wires are used inside of computer chips. So if you haven't checked out our episode on e-cycling, yep. go do that. There's a cool process for that. Maybe that's where we talked about the cyanide Probably. process. Uh, and of course, <laughs> I even have it listed here. Of course, you can get sweet gold teeth or have a cool gold grill made. Because why Why wouldn't you do that? Nice. If we got an unprofessional, enge- <gasps> the top unprofessional, the bottom engineering <gasps> grill... And you just wear that. It just pops out. Yeah, on it just off, pops right? out. So I don't have yeah. to like, knock my teeth out. To no, wear, I right? mean, I'll knock your teeth out to help. But yeah, <laughs> we could have sweet grills. Okay. Uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about before some fun facts is fool's gold, also known as pyrite or iron pyrite. Uh, fool's gold. Have you ever bought one of those fool's gold blocks? No, no. Oh, I had it when I was a kid. A naturally occurring iron uh, mineral. The name comes from the Greek word pyre. P-Y-R, fire, because pyrite emits sparks when it's struck by metal. Who knew? Uh, pyrite is called fool's gold because to the novice, its color is deceptively similar to a gold nugget. Interesting. Yeah. So just a few fun facts for you. You cool with that? Yeah. Top three reserve holders, Australia, South Africa, Russia. Seawater contains four grams of gold in one that one million tons of water. All we need to do so is get a couple. So a huge amount there, yeah. hard, to, hard to get it out of it. This is the best one. The desk mask of Tutankhamun, a.k.a. King Tut, contained 100 kilograms of gold. In modern-day dollars, that's $5,164,629 worth of gold. Interesting. Which is more interesting that the artifact itself is priceless, right? So it's yeah. worth way more than that. Um, although gold's official role in the international monetary system has come to an end by the 1970s, The metal remains as highly regarded as a highly regarded reserve asset. Seventy or forty-five percent of all the world's gold is held by governments and banks. Yeah, the the term gold standard doesn't really mean anything anymore. Yeah, so that was my long one. That was everything gold. Okay. Uh, I know you have two to go through. My silver one that I cover is a lot shorter. But before we get into yours, how about we take a break for a word from our sponsor? Let me guess. No sponsor, because as usual, you are the worst. Actually, smart guy, this episode is sponsored by Zometry. What? What? I know. Mine's blown. If you're looking for on-demand manufacturing with massive network capacity for CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, or any kind of rapid manufacturing, make sure you check out Zometry.com. And while you're there, check out the new complete guide to 3D printing, which can be found on the resources tab of their homepage. 
Better yet, make sure you use the discount code UNPRO25 to get $25 off your next purchase, James, through April 30th. That is so much money. It is. And one more time, that's Zometry.com. X-O-M-E-T-R-Y.com. All right, Luke, what are you kicking us off with? So I'm going to start with platinum. Ooh, I like it. Uh, so my ring that my wife bought me was is a is a platinum. It ring. is. Is it very heavy? It, it is did... heavy for a ring. It's it, it's it's actually quite heavy. Oh, it for is the, heavy. For the size of it. Wow. Uh, and I have another like just a white gold one that I wear. But so platinum has a because you got podcast money. I do have podcast money. So it has a a symbol of PT, which makes total sense. Unlike <laughs> the rest of everything else, it has an atomic mass of one hundred and ninety five point zero eight four U's, which I don't mm. know what the U means. I'm assuming, I don't know. Uh, has a boiling point of 6,917 degrees wow. Fahrenheit, because that's all our listeners care about. You always give things in Celsius. I give Fahrenheit. I, hey, we're an international... That's about a gazillion degrees Celsius. Uh, it has an atomic number of 78. It has a melting point of 3,215. That's why I was surprised... That's a big difference between Yours platinum and gold. Yours is a lot higher than gold. Yeah, yeah, significantly higher. You could not melt that in a tent and you, dump it on someone's head. <laughs> you could no. not. <laughs> uh, the neighbors on the periodic tabor, t- tabor, tabor. Uh, to the right and left. So on the left side of platinum is uridium, and on Ugh. the right side is gold. They are neighbors. Oh, they're best friends. They are best Aww. buds. Uh, it is in group 10. Period six, block D. Oh, block D. It sounds like prison. Yeah. Cell block D. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so it's super dense. Like you just you just examined the ring that I had yes, on my hand. It's very so dense. it's super dense, really heavy. Uh, it's malleable, ductile. It's super unreactive. So it's oh. used in a lot of um, situations where you don't want to have a metal react chemically. Like, like iron sense. is going to rust right away, and certain other things are going to you know, um, maybe combust or whatever the problem might be. Uh, So it's a silvery white uh, in uh, in color, and the name is derived from the Spanish term platano, which means little silver. Little silver. That's cute. So uh, it's one of the least reactive materials, so it's super resistant to corrosion, uh, even at high temperatures, and that's why it's considered a noble metal. That's very noble. That's where I got the noble from. Gotcha. Uh, so early history. Uh, so early history, they discovered this all the way back to the Egyptians, specifically another person that laid in the casket. I can't pronounce the name. Theobus, T-H-E-B-E-S. Yeah, Theobus. Uh, the sarcophagus was adorned with platinum, oh, uh, nice. along with some gold and silver. Uh, and also the South American, uh, the indigenous South American people uh, were also known to incorporate platinum into a lot of their ceremonial jewelry, nose rings, uh, and necklaces. You had a nose ring at one point, didn't you? I, I did not okay, have good. a nose ring. <laughs> uh, platinum is, its discovery officially was credited to a guy by the name of Antonio de Yola. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, de Yola. And this was back in 1746. And when you talk about the scarcity, so platinum is extremely rare. Very, so very it rare. occurs in a concentration of 0.005 parts per million in the Earth's crust. So it's very similar to gold yeah. uh, in its scarcity. Here's the crazy thing. An ounce of platinum costs $906.70 today. I have a little market thing that gives you metal prices. Um Common uses. It is most commonly used, and I had no idea because— You didn't know this? It, I didn't. I, huh, I don't think I did. That surprises me. So a uh, catalytic converter mm-hmm. uh, inside of your car. Uh, what it does is it actually reduces all the toxic gases and pollutants that come out of your tailpipe um, because the catalytic effect that it has inside of your catalytic converter to turn all those nasty hydrocarbons and all that stuff into, I mean, it's still a little bit pollution, but it's not nearly as bad if you didn't have a catalytic converter. That's why you need a catalytic converter on your car. That's right, kids. That's right, kids. <laughs> so that's all I got. That, that was, was very well done. Quick. No, that Thank was you, great. James. There's a lot of that. interesting stuff about platinum. All I know is it's very expensive. 
Yeah. And when you try to get a ring out of it, that's expensive so, uh, as well. So to give you an idea, we talked about that. So gold, gold. today is a thousand one thousand six hundred and seventy two dollars and eighty five cents mm-hmm. per mm-hmm. ounce. Uh, platinum is. Only oh, it's really dropped. It's yeah. down like it, two hundred smackers. It's dropped a ton since February. Yeah, wonder why. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Very interesting. I so. guess jewelry wise, though, you usually aren't getting twenty four karat gold, so it's probably cheaper to get a gold ring because it's lower carats versus yeah. platinum. You're probably getting all platinum. It's, it's pure Is that platinum. about right? Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. All right, so moving on to numero dos for me, we're looking at silver. A uh, fun fact for you. Kills Here's werewolves. A little, well, it does kill werewolves. That's science. Okay. Uh, do you know who the greatest explorer for silver and gold is? Oh, Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, Mm-mm. Temple of Doom. Wrong. Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> oh! Silver and gold. Yeah. He'd throw his pickaxe. He would. Then he'd lick it. He could taste it. Did you know that he was actually tasting for peppermint, but they cropped that part of the show out? They What? Fun fact for you, Luke. Okay, silver. Group 11, period 5, cell block D. Symbol AG, which makes perfect sense. It's short for Argentums. Didn't you say gold was AG? No, it was AU. Oh, okay. It? Gotcha. Yeah, it's AU. Sorry. Silver's AG. But for the same reason as gold, because that is Latin for whatever the Latin word for silver is. What did I say it was? Argentums. Mm -hmm. Uh, The word silver, on the other hand, is from the Anglo-Saxon word selfor, S-E-O-L-F-O-R. So I guess that's kind of closer. Okay. Atomic number 47 melts at, I'll just give Fahrenheit since you're so angry about it, 1763, which is almost 1000 C. And the boiling point is... 3,924 F. So that's pretty boily. But, you know, at least that one maybe you could get closer to melting in a tent. Yeah. Uh, Not nearly as dense as gold. Also, shocking, is a solid at room temperature. Good to know. So the history of silver. Silver mining dates way, way back, all the way to 3,000 B.C., where slag heaps near mines in Turkey and Greece show that it was in high demand. Uh, The metal was refined by uh, copulation. You nailed not, it. Not co- not copulation. <laughs> no. Copulation. 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 Nailed it. A process invented by the Chal... Who's this? Ka- Chal- Chaldeans? Chaldeans. I'm just going to get made Chaldeans. fun of for this. Chaldeans. God, this is the worst. They lived somewhere in like southern Iraq. Uh, it consisted of heating the molten metal into shallow cups over... Uh, which they blew like really strong draft air, and this oxidized the other metals there, like lead, they and could coppers, scrape and it stuff. Off, right, right. And so then you only had the silver unaffected for you to have nice pure silver to kill your werewolves with. Um, silver was also my. What if you had a vampire and a werewolf combined? Do you think the silver would kill they it, did or do that. you have to have a silver they stake? Did that. They did that in one of the Underworld movies. Oh, I have to check that out. Is What's-Her-Face in it? Kate Beckinsale? That's the one. Uh, yeah, I think, mm. I, I think it was the second one. Okay, I'll check that out. Uh, silver's also mined, was also mined by the Central and South American civilizations in Peru, Bolivia, and Mexico. Uh, it really exploded on Earth, however, when the Europeans landed in the New World back in 1492, our good friend Christopher Columbus. Sailed the ocean blue. He sailed it blue. Sailed it, sailed it very blue. Longtime listener. Big fan of the show. Spanish conquerors discovered that South America was home to rich veins of silver and silver ore. And they mined that wealth enthusiastically. Um, this was all according to the Silver Institute. Which basically which means they probably did it illegally with a lot of slave labor. A lot of slave and... labor and murder, yeah. I <laughs> assume, yes. Yeah, 85% terrible. of the silver produced worldwide came from Bolivia, Peru, and Mexico between 1500 and 1800. That's crazy. 85%. That's a lot. All under total legal ways of doing things. Um, So where does it come from? It is mostly extracted from lead, zinc, copper, gold, and copper, nickel ores as a byproduct of mining for these metals. So they're really going after these other things to to get what they want, but silver is just kind of like a happy byproduct of all of that work that they're doing. 
The metal is recovered either from the ore or during the electrolytic refining of copper. The world produces 20, 20,000 tons per year, uh, 0.05 parts per million in the Earth's crust. Mexico, Peru, and China are the top producers. The top reserve holders are Peru, Poland, and Chile. That's kind of interesting. And the ways it's used. Uh, so we all probably have seen this. Sterling silver is a very common form. It's 92.5% silver. So this is stuff like jewelry and silverware are made out of. I think of those those travel spoons. You know, when you go to a different state. Oh, like those little baby ones? It's a little baby yeah. silver spoon. It has like the, 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 the crest of the state on it. Yeah, like that. So it, the rest, the other 7.5% is usually copper or some other metal. And then the rest is silver. But this makes it much more durable because uh, other like just full silver would not be uh, silver is used to make mirrors which i did not know mm -hmm. uh, as it's the best reflector of visible light known although it does tarnish with time so that's unfortunate it is also used in dental alloys solder and brazing alloys electrical contacts batteries and silver paints are used for making printed circuits so good for our technologies as well Silver bromide and iodide were imported in the history, or were important in the history of photography, which also had no clue about this. So because they're really sensitive to light, it's used uh, so that even when the rise of digital photography showed up, silver salts are still really important. If you haven't checked out our episode on digital cameras, by the way, go do that. Uh, it creates a really high quality image and it's used for protecting against illegal copying. So it's still used today on, like, actual fancy art prints. Uh, it has, this is really weird, silver has an antibacterial property, uh, and silver nanoparticles are used in clothing to pretend, prevent bacteria from digesting sweat and forming unpleasant odors. I so actually, you should get that. I actually stink. have, uh, I have a, a, a T-shirt that supposedly has some, like, embedded silver material in it that prevents, it, yeah. it's a hiking shirt. And just a warning, you have to be careful about what you're getting because silver in, like, its metal form doesn't have any of these antibacterial properties. And a lot of people that are out there just to make a dollar will sell you these products that don't actually have these oh. properties as part of them. Do so you ever be careful the, with what you're Do you ever see getting. those little silver bars of soap that help I get do. the stink yes. off your hands? Like if you've got garlic I don't know if they're hands. actually silver or not. They look silver. But yeah, I have one of those. They okay. work pretty well. Yeah. So go buy one of those. We should put it on our website. Everyone can go buy them. We'll Ooh, make a million. A million. Um, and the last one, silver threads are woven into the fingertips of gloves so that you can use your touch screen with your glove oh. fingertip. I never knew how that worked, and that's how it I is. I just assume they put a hot dog material in there because I've seen touch pads work with hot dogs. Oh, they do that. I yeah, assume. they chop a little piece of a hot dog and just on there. put it in the glove. If just you a little... check out our episode on how touch screens work, you'll be able to find out the hot dog trick. <laughs> uh, three fun facts for Shoot. you. Pure silver is the best conductor of heat and electricity, according to the Jefferson National Linear Accelerator That's Laboratory. Cool. They sound like a very reliable source. Silver forms, this is, this is crazy. Silver forms in star explosions called supernova, as does gold. A study published in September of 2012 in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics found that smaller stars that explode produce silver, while larger stars explode and produce gold. How's that a so, thing? So, and, How do I know that's and, even the case? And, but they could just be lying. They're, like, they're just lying. Like, they're, yeah. they're not taking samples. They're not. They're not like, on they the know stars. This? I know. How it's do crazy. Know I don't know. I feel like they're just making it up. The Earth is flat. <laughs> oh, goodness. Check okay, out our last, Flat Earth episode. That's true. <laughs> good, good call. Flat, flat Earth. Okay, one more fun fact. How do museums preserve their silver to make it so shiny, Luke? Hmm because I told you it's going to tarnish, they coat it with transparent lacquers, and they're now working on a new form of that so that they don't okay. have to do it as often. I don't know why, but silver's worth, like, nothing. It is, like, free. So, so like, you can right, go buy all Yeah, like, of right it. now, silver is $17 and some change an ounce. That's not much. We could go buy, like, a couple pounds, no problem, just to have. Easily. Yeah. Just to have it around. I don't know where you even buy that. And, and like, even, like, the highest it's been in, in years was, like, 40, like, going all the way back to, like, 96. The most expensive it's ever been is, like, 50 bucks an ounce. That's nothing. Nothing. Not when you got podcast money. 
That's right. All right. Before we move on, let's take a break for this week's Luke's rant. Okay, so here's my rant. I want to hear it. It's these exploding crazy... stars. <laughs> no, it's not the close. It's not the exploding stars over our flat Earth. My rant <sighs> is all about like these. I'll buy your gold companies. Oh, so yeah. So they're like, oh, yeah. they're not as bad as the, the CBD and vape shops that okay. are like on every single corner. There are a lot that's of them. Crazy. There's one on either side of my town. That's it, it's nuts. You, you got to get your vapes and your CBDs. Uh, but this is these places that buy your gold. And I wish I, we would have done this episode before my wife went to one of these places. So... My wife has a ton of gold jewelry that she doesn't wear anymore, and their thing is, oh, bring your jewelry to us, and we'll give you all this money. Yeah, well, you're and rich I kind of know how much we gave, roughly, and we totally got hosed. Yeah. On, yeah. You know, and I know it wasn't 24-karat gold. It wasn't pure gold, but even if it was half gold, we got hosed on what they gave us. But these places, they're literally everywhere. You bring all of like your old jewelry, and they kind of look at it, determine what it is, and they give you this price. And based off of the, the quick calculations i did i had this big huge ring that my my parents gave me that i never wear it's like this it's just not me you know i'm a pretty conservative kind of person other than your grill i'm not flashy other than my unprofessional engineering grill (laughs) and i think for the ring alone they gave us like four hundred dollars whenever i kind of figured out okay let's say this was 20 for or 14 carats, so half gold, the gold, the rest was something else. I figured out it was actually worth closer to like a thousand dollars based off of how. Yeah, but are how you gonna melt that sucker down? No, but it's just like they weren't even remotely close to what it was worth. So, and it's just it's it's just crazy. So send your gold to Luke. Send it to me, and he'll pay you nothing probably. I'll I'll I, yeah. We, well, we can melt it. You know, obviously Carl Drago did it. Yeah. I call him Carl. Carl. <laughs> you call him <laughs> Carl. Carl. I love Drago. that. He's the only person in yeah, the show so, with a normal name. Yeah, so Carl. I, don't know. I, I, I avoid these treasure hunt places. Gold's value, so d- just gold's value has just been increasing dramatically. Hold on to it until it's worth way more. I mean, literally since like basically 2006 it's gone from like six hundred dollars and it's now up over wow. 1600 so just hold on to it it, it'll be advice. worth a lot of money trust me trust luke he's reliable okay luke thank you for that great uh, public service announcement thank you let's move on to your last okay one. my last one i'll go quick no, no worries. Uh, Take my, your time. my last one is rhodium it has a symbol of RH. Again, makes perfect sense to me. That one does. Uh, and for some reason, whenever I did the cut and paste, I didn't get the exact same that's all information, good. but that's all right. It has an atomic number of 45. It has an atomic mass of 102.9055 U's, which I still don't know what that means. It was discovered back in 1803 officially by a cat by the name of William Hyde Walston. Who doesn't name their finding after themselves? Like, why isn't this Wallstonium? Yeah, that's what I would have done. Yeah. I'm not sure that's how it works. But um, it has a melting point. For some reason, I don't have the boiling point. I wish I did. It has a melting point of 35, over 35,000 wow. degrees. 35,000. Wow. 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. So 3,567 to be exact. That's about, I don't know. Four degrees Kelvin, ten degrees Celsius, somewhere in that neighborhood, <laughs> give or take. Uh, it's neighbors on the periodic table of elements. To the left, you're gonna find ruthium. I guess is Ruth invented it, probably. And then a guy by the name of Palladium, Paul, in, invented or a paladin. discovered uh, paladin. Palladium. Is is? Palladium. No, but I figure he was a paladin. Dungeons and Dragons yeah, paladin. paladin. Uh, it is in Group Nine, Period Five, Cell Block D. Uh, so this thing is the rarest of the rare, James. Is it? It, it? it is the rarest of all metals. Okay. Like, by far. And I'm so glad I got this one. Okay, I'm glad Rhodium too. is only point zero zero zero. There's a whole other zero in there. That's an extra Two zero. parts per million. That is very so, rare. So... I don't even, I can't even, it's a whole nother decimal place plus some beyond what gold and silver and platinum are. Uh, So super, super rare. Wow. Uh, And the coolest part about this is the price. Oh yeah, look at that number. So as of today, an ounce of rhodium is worth 12,000. $12,000. 
thousand three hundred dollars. Ouch. Hopefully it's not used in much because that is expensive. So it's very similar. It's it usages to uh, to platinum. It's used in catalytic converters, um, jewelry, electronic contacts, um, uh, headlight reflectors, uh, filters uh, for for mammograms. Huh. Um, but the crazy thing is, like, if you just look at again, I'm going to go back to this uh, That's metal quite calculator. quite the table you found here. Yeah, it's, wow, it's quite the table. Wow, why didn't you buy that back in? So this, this has made me. So if I, I if I would have bought an ounce of this just back in 2018, an ounce is going to cost me, you know, 1,400 bucks for an ounce of this. Since 2018 to today, how is that a thing? It's 12 thousand three hundred i it is it's a it's it, it's multiplied 12 times that would have been a heck of an investment and and you really and I, and botched I don't know, that like one. and i'm sure there's some kind of economic trend but if you go back to 2000 it, it did multiply 12 uh, times eight, but still uh if you go back to 2008 it was like nine thousand dollars for some reason so there's looking there's, at this chart it's time for you to sell your Rhodium. Yeah, sell, sell, sell yeah. because it's 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 about to drop. Something's gonna happen. I don't know if that's like technology happening. Because uh, somebody this, stopped a war. Yeah, or something. something. Yes, it's, something happened in two thousand eight. I wonder where it actually is mined at most, because maybe that would explain the prices. Oh, right? you know what? I saw it and I didn't write it down. Mm, that's okay. My I bad. won't hold it against you but too yeah. much. So if you have it sell it because i can't imagine it going more than I'm i like totally. that you're a financial advisor now too this is cool this is a good gig that's for what you i do i know that is what, what you I do. do we help the people we do help the people mostly you speaking of them. the people speaking of the people how about a couple shout outs what do you think uh to get a shout out from here on out you have to send us gold silver platinum or rhodium it's the only way you get a shout out from now on what Can a, we say that? What legally? about pal- palladium? I uh, see up there. Palladium isn't worth all that much. It's, uh, as, it's better than silver. Okay. Either way, we'll take palladium. I don't as think well. legally we're allowed to say that, yeah. so ignore that. I still I like said. it. Okay. Joshua M did not sil- send us any silver or gold or palladium, but he listens to us while on his way to his internship. Well, that's why he can't send at us at the anything. gold mine it's because he's he's an intern. Oh no, he's not at a gold mine, but he is an intern, and he thinks we should do an episode on rail guns. And I agree, Josh, but Luke shot me down I, on this one no before. No pun intended, but yes, I did shoot you, did you shoot down. shoot me down. So maybe this will convince him to do it. Also, Josh is a PA guy right by York, PA. Nice. Woo-hoo. I like York. That's Wawa Land it's, versus it's, 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 Sheets, it's for sure but we won't hold it against Josh. Uh, Monica K has been sharing with sharing our podcast with her friends because we rock. Thank you, Monica. Of course. Thank uh, you. Very nice to hear. Want some stickers, which I'll get to you once i get your address and gold and silver and gold and silver or palladium or rhodium yeah mostly rhodium yeah, mostly rhodium yeah so thank you for writing in if any of you want to write in either with topic suggestions you want to score some stickers whatever the case may be why don't you just email us at unprofessional engineering at gmail.com and make sure you subscribe make sure you write us five star reviews nothing less <laughs> Am I allowed to say that too? I don't know. It felt really threatening the it way did you feel did it. Threatening. I'm we'll sorry. take any of your reviews. We will. We We've will. had ones up there, not many, but it hurts my feelings. I don't sleep at night then. <laughs> but yeah, leave us a review and all that jazz. Hopefully, you all got value out of this. See value because of the I value of stuff. Did. Thanks. Uh, if you did and you liked it, email us. If not, you know you can email us anyways. Until next time. See it.